Okay, we're finishing up the first week here on this. Uh, we should have the new blower coming in today and a few other things. We're removing these radiator shutters. There's little mounting bolts on them here. And same thing on the back side. Get those bolts out of there. The screen is held in by four screws, one, two, and then top corner and top corner. But uh, this, this is leaking air. We're just gonna disconnect the air lines and block them off. But we'll remove this obstruction then in front of the radiator. Because the, the tighter that fit is, mm -hmm. it, it'll make the air go through the, you know, that's probably 10% loss right now. Okay. Sucking in and around there. Okay. Versus through the radiator. Trying to clean out the sight glass. I got some Dawn in there right now, but. Yeah, a little. So now I can clean that glass good. So now it's clean. Motor's on its way to Memphis. How's it getting delivered? UPS. Okay. Did it say what date it was going to get delivered? They didn't have a, a delivery date yet. They picked it up and it's en route to Memphis. Oh. Getting in there, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this big old 50 DN alternator has a real bad oil leak around the mounting for it, so Jonathan's gonna remove it. Battery switched off. Yeah. Okay. How many more bolts you got on that alternator? Two. Yeah, that alternator weighs like a hundred and something pounds, eh? <laughs> 125, 130 pounds. Scraping off old petrified gaskets is no fun. Can you move that strap back around it? Yeah, I'm going to. With a carbide scraper? Okay, Jonathan got all the new shocks on the drive axle here, and then we moved a couple of other shocks around that were bad, with replaced with some of the good ones from the back. Uh, because again, it takes 12 and you only bought four, or it takes six, wait, uh, eight, and you only bought four. <laughs> Gonna fix an oil leak on this air compressor here. This is the side of the air compressor. 
for pink chips. His air compressor was leaking oil from the seal here. This is a different air compressor, but yeah, so we're pulling that off and, and fix that. had come out and that was just flopping around in there and it was able to suck air from the engine compartment into the air filter instead of the cool air from outside. That's for your shutter stat, your okay. shutters. Reman blower. One of the lobes has a pretty good little ding in it, but uh, otherwise I think it looks pretty good. This Permatex gasket sealant actually worked really, really well. It's a high tech. Put it on both the gasket and then the surface where it mounts. So when we slide that blower in, we don't knock that gasket out of place because as you slide it in, it wants to kind of push it. It's real easy to get it to push it out of alignment. Okay, so we'll set it like halfway in there and then I'll have you climb in. Mm -hmm. I'm give this up. Because we hold it up, we're going to wipe the bottom and make sure it's clean too. Move the towel. Push my hand. That sucks.
Then we're gonna have to spin it, get the gears to line up, put the shaft. So just the best I've ever used. Yeah, that's big. Nice. to line up and you're in good shape. <laughs> okay, so we got all the rivets in there and then we put Permatex all around it too. So now that fresh air, as it comes in from the outside, um, is not gonna be sucking in warm air from the engine bay. Uh, that ought to give it a little horsepower increase too, just by having the cooler air instead of hot air going into the, into the engine. So it was still going through the air filter and getting filtered up there. But uh, again, before this over here was sucking dirty air in through here. Um, and then we got uh, all that done. So yeah, the blower's on, everything's ready to go. We're just finishing up the tune-up on this and then uh, valve cover's going back on. And we'll have this thing running uh, tomorrow. We got uh, the new uh, block warmer put in. So that's all installed there. He needs to, this wire for the block warmer is all melted and that's bare wire and everything. It's 110. I don't know how far back it goes, but it's going to be shorted out like that. It's just like a piece of Romex or something. Um, he'd asked about just cutting it and putting a plug end on it, but I don't know. You know, that thing's like 10 feet long, at least I think from what I can see where it goes. And I'd be afraid to just reuse that wire again since something that traumatic happened to it. So I think he's going to try and run a new wire through there. Okay, so we just bypassed that completely. We didn't need that anymore because we're not using the shutters. Um, so we just put a plug at the end of this airline here. It is a copper line. It come, it tees off in the back. Um, but yeah, we just capped it off and eliminated that air leak on there. So the fresh air intake, it comes from in front of the radiator. It's back there uh, in the screen. So it's a big area back there. That's where the air for the engine comes in. So we went ahead and did a tune-up on this side of the engine. Uh, 1.460 is where all the injectors were exactly set at, and all of the exhaust valves were perfectly timed. Um, 17, uh, we used a 15 and 17 uh, step thing, so the 15 thousandths fits and 17 thousandths doesn't, which means it's 16 thousandths. So then we came over to this side. He had an injector that stuck on this side a couple years ago, and they replaced this injector. We checked the timing on it, uh, and it was 1.484. Uh, so half of the engine on the other side was all set exactly at 1.460 and this side the timing was set at 1.484 for the injector height. So then as we went through it and checked them all, they had redone this whole rack over here to 1.484. So half of the engine was set at 1.484, the other half was set at 1.460. So it's definitely going to run better uh, being timed uh, left bank and right bank the same. But uh, it took us a little while to get that all straightened out. Okay, next video we should have this thing out for a test drive. Um, it's the weekend here, so Monday. One thing, uh, the engine, why is it painted yellow? It's a Detroit diesel. Apparently the guy that used to own it uh, had a trucking company and all his, all his trucks were Caterpillar. Uh, so he wanted his engine and his bus painted the same as his Caterpillar <laughs> engines.
up the holler through the trees And from a mile away you can hear them play As they climb that hill with ease At the top of that mountain there's a new life waiting For those who can make the run They can make it to the top, Scott will put them in the shop Till their new life has begun Where the buses come to run Bus Grease Mountain We're gonna get that big job done